how have you been this morning anyway, Sean Ellen? All right, thank you. Not so bad. Yeah, <laughs> quite rainy here in the Peak District at the moment, unfortunately, but um, hoping there's some sunny weather next week. <laughs> <laughs> and that's right, because we did say you actually live in the Peak District now, don't you? I do, yeah, I do. Not, I not so far from you. Oh, actually, where about are you? Where about are you? Uh, it's Chapel on the Frith, so it's just over the hill from you, really. So. Fantastic. You've got the most amazing accent. Uh, please do tell me, are you, uh, you, you're obviously from Wales, aren't you? So do you want to tell me a bit about your background? Yeah, born and brought up in Wales. Welsh was my first language. Um, and uh, yeah, so played the harp, performed in Eisteddfodau, all that Welsh stuff. And uh, yeah, I did all my education up to and including A-level through the medium of Welsh. So uh, yeah, it's very Welsh originally. And my surname was Jones. So you can't get much more Welsh than that, can you really? Oh my word. And in fact, you've mentioned a, a passion of mine, which is singing. So you used to sing in the Eisteddfod, did you? I did, yeah, in choirs and little groups and things and do recitation as well. That's what I used to do a lot more of. So lots of expressions as you're saying a poem or something. Mm. Actually, a little thing that you told me, which because uh, we've obviously got to know each other in during going through this process of you being my mentor. Um, and you actually mentioned to me that you actually learned, did all your schooling in the language of Welsh all the way up to A level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it sounds weird unless you were, you are there doing it because that was the language we spoke in, you know, in school and most of us at home. So it's quite normal for us. Is it? Yeah. So the only thing that was quite difficult was the textbooks for French were in English. So you were sort of translating two ways, um, uh, which was a bit awkward. But other than that, it was all right. So I've we actually um, had somebody who lived with us for a short while. She was Italian and another girl who was French. Um, and, and and they were saying that as they were learning the language, they had that the breakthrough was when you actually start to think in that language, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Was that so? Was your first language Welsh and English was your second? Is that how it, it worked? You grow up bilingual, so you just trip between the two of them really so you're not aware of thinking it or speaking in one or the other language when you grow up bilingual um, it's a bit of a different situation than learning a language yeah um, I do notice if I have been uh, back home home for a while I do start thinking in Welsh whereas my usual at the moment now is thinking in English so yeah <laughs> Shana, I just want to tell you that we've got some lovely people listening to us at the moment. Hello, um, good morning, Heather T. Bay. She's a friend of mine. She, in fact, I write. Uh, this is a this is a connection. In fact, because Heather, I write articles for her. I've been writing for her for three and a half years, and she um, runs local people magazine. So she's listening in. And also, we've got Irene Wignall. Hello, Irene. And Tony's here, Tony McKenzie and Sue France. So they're all saying hello to us. And in fact, I'll just share this little comment. Uh, Tony has just said, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies do if you've got any questions as we go through and we're talking please do uh give us a shout to sort of say ask if I add any comments um so it'd be lovely to get on to the topic of our book mentoring in fact we um i first met you through sue france who's listening this That's morning right. lovely it was at one of her networking meetings yeah. and it's amazing finding out what you do and how you came into it so do you want to tell us a little bit about your journey because you didn't actually start as a book mentor did you no i actually started i i did a biology degree and um a master's in european environmental regulation um and I got into local government, starting off in sustainable development and community work and that sort of thing. And I spent 16 years in local government, uh, moving into policy and strategy development and um, working on community safety, equalities, all sorts of things and got it up into senior management. And things changed after 16 years, the culture changed. I didn't feel happy. And so I took voluntary redundancy. I decided to take the power back and just to take voluntary redundancy and worry about what I was going to do afterwards, basically. Um, and so 
I was then spent, I spent a bit of time wondering what exactly I was going to do because I was always quite envious of my husband who, um, since he was little, knew he wanted to be a police officer. And I hadn't spent my childhood thinking, oh, I've always wanted to be a local government officer. <laughs> it just wasn't, wasn't what I'd been dreaming of. Um, but I didn't know what that dream was. I knew I loved reading. I knew I loved working with people and helping people. A lot of my work when I was in local government, I loved helping people develop to be the best they could be within mm -hmm. my teens. Um, and I just started working on a book of a, a friend of mine, her mother um, was working on a book and I got involved in that. And, I, and it just suddenly this eureka moment of, oh, I quite like this because I've always <laughs> loved English uh, language. I've always loved reading and helping people. My mother was an English teacher. So it all sort of slotted together. And from then on then, I started helping people with writing books and you've actually done quite a few and you said that there's quite a bit of variety isn't there? oh, there's a huge variety just at the moment even you know I've, i work on non-fiction and fiction so i work on all sorts of things children's books business books um and uh self-help books and at the moment um, I can spend an afternoon in New England, strolling down the streets, looking at the clapperboard buildings. <laughs> you know, I'm getting tips on how to improve my business from uh, a couple of books I'm working on. Um, starting to think a bit about religion and how religion links to your role in life. Wow. There's all sorts of things going on. There's a domestic noir, so that's a thriller. So from day to day, it's varied, and I just love it and the people as well um as i think i've said to you before you know i've worked on comes to about 50 books now wow. and the variety there and the variety of people and you know the majority of them have become close friends because as you know it's yeah. quite a personal thing to be working on a book you know you're opening your heart aren't you really and putting it down on paper no matter what sort of book it is and so you develop this relationship with the, the authors you're working with and you know without fail they, they become friends by the end of it so I've got 50 new friends through it as well which can't be bad <laughs> even if maybe they don't think I still stalk them <laughs> Well, it's interesting what you've just, I mean, you've said a lot of things there, which I'd love to pick up on. Do you know what I think is absolutely awesome is just sitting here watching you talking about it. Your passion comes through. Yeah. And it is, I think um, you've also talked about a few things like you talked about the journey you've been on, which has been, it's quite clearly been quite a diverse journey, hasn't it? It's sort of gone from one thing to the next, yeah. but you've almost didn't sort of, and I think this is often in life for a lot of us, we don't sort of set out on where we intend to be. No, no, Our destination no. sometimes evolves as time goes by, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's what's lovely is that what you've done is you've actually gone with what your passion is and you're absolutely amazing at it. Um, oh, thank we, you. We also talked about how, um, we talked in fact about the mindset of yes. book writing and mindset of an entrepreneur. And we were saying how, um, I mean, I've certainly had lots of lovely discussions with you and I'm sure that some of the people listening um, have done as well. And it came out about how it, you need a lot of self-motivation, don't you? Yeah. And you're like a, an amazing friend, but also an accountability partner, aren't you? That, that's what a lot of people find useful is they know, usually it's every month that we're meeting, but also I'm available to them within that month. And knowing that they've got that chat with me in a couple of weeks' time, it does motivate them. And as well, you know, we all face problems in getting going and getting started and so being able to just contact me and saying I'm struggling with this mm -hmm. and I find quite often just like like you're having your five minute chat with a friend over coffee yeah. or something well very rarely five minutes is it if you're having a chat with a friend but you know it, usually that sorts an awful lot of life's problems that you would worry about for weeks on your own yeah. but just a quick message or a quick chat really helps with that and yeah it's it's that getting down to it and 
just getting on with it really that there's nothing worse than a blank screen or a blank page and knowing where to start and you know I can give them various hints and tips as to how to just get going I could go through a few of them now if you wanted to yeah well, can I just, yeah and also I just want to mention that just I hope you don't mind a few comments like Ooh. so Emma is listening and she says hello oh, <laughs> hi Emma it's so lovely thank you ladies it's really really lovely to have you listening um and please again if you've got any questions or and i love i think it's lovely feedback for you isn't it sean ellen okay. so can thank i just you. ask you then it would really help i think because i think it's great learning from this situation all of these conversations is there's obviously a lot more to book mentoring isn't there yeah. um, than meets the eye um people think you know you're not just that voice at the end of the phone yeah. or face to face because I've had a session with you which was absolutely incredible and if in a moment I can show my amazing mind map that we created <laughs> um, I remember and, that <laughs> it was awesome and it was a, it, but what I was going to say to you was it would be amazing if you can actually we can break it down I said to people sometimes it's learning about the who why what how when where of, and, and tips about you know sort of I certainly had sometimes writer's block I'm sure people get that feeling so how do you, how does it all start? What's your process? Right. Well, the the process. If someone hasn't written anything, because people come to me at every stage, they may have spent twenty years in one instance writing a book, and they've got piles and piles of paper, and we have to work through that. But let's let's give an example of someone who hasn't got a clue. They know they've always wanted to write a book, don't know where to start. So similar to your situation yeah. there, and you're a writer anyway, you know, you write for magazines and stuff anyway. Um, and I feel the first thing is to think about your why. Why do you want to write a book? Who do you want to write a book for? What? Who is your reader? Mm. I'd start to really think about who your reader is, what they want help with, what's keeping them up at night. You know, what sort of person are they? Um, are they married? Um, do they have pets? What do they read currently? You know, what are their hobbies? And start really thinking about that. And then from that point of view, it's thinking, so what issue do you want to help them with? And that's when that mind map, like that piece of paper you've got there comes in where we get a big sheet of paper. And the interesting thing is, is now I've learned in the last few weeks of lockdown how to do it online. So I now do online mind mapping. Um, and so that's just as good. You know, I don't get to play with colored pens. No. Which is not as <laughs> not as good, but, you know, you can do it online. And that's when you set out what are the main themes you want to tackle? So like with yours, it was trying to narrow down on which part of everything you do you wanted to focus on with the book. Mm. And just starting to put the main questions that people ask you, what are the main things you can help people with and putting them down on this mind map. And from that then populating which part of that you want to go into more depth on mm -hmm. and how to do that the, the benefit of that then is rather than when you have to motivate yourself to sit down and write instead of thinking I'm writing a book which feels huge feels absolutely enormous you're thinking okay I'm going to write this part of the introduction today and these are the things I'm going to tackle in that because it's all down on your mind map mm -hmm. and these are the examples I'm going to bring in and this is um, a top tip I want to put in there. And that makes it feel much more manageable as mm. something to sit down and do. You're much more likely to be motivated and you're much more likely to sit down and do it. Mm. And I've certainly, in fact, can I show my mind back? Of course you can. I think this will really help. Um, because it's it was it was actually a mind blowing experience for anybody who's listening because it wasn't what I expected. You'd said we were going to do it. But actually, I think certainly, certainly what a lot of you, what you're saying relates so much to coaching and what I do, because people can sometimes feel overwhelmed and you, we all have all this information and all this life experience and all these things we want to get out and share and help people with. But sometimes it's like, where do you start? And what I found was amazing and powerful with this. This is my mind map, guys. Um, it, it was like, I don't know if you can see that. It's a bit difficult to sort of, um, but what, 
we started in the middle, didn't we? With, with, I mean, and that just basically was just a little summary of what I do. But what was great about it, what it was, we were actually saying enabling parents, helping young people to reach their full potential. That's what we said. Yeah. And then it was going into the introduction and, and what we put then the wheel of life and then the day in the life of. So that was a bit about the pains, wasn't it? And the, and the troubles and passion, uh, the difficulties that people have. Yeah. strengths and skills and then we looked at how can they can achieve their aspirations and then we looked at you know safety and security which is the anti bullying program and then the communication uh, uh, communicating effectively but what I was going to say to you was I couldn't believe how when you did it like that we started with your colored pens all of a sudden um, it might be better in that chapter yeah. or it might be better in that chapter yeah. or oh let's leave that for another and then you gave me these little things at the bottom which were tips like um breaking to you know breakout techniques this is an exercise to do this is a quote this is a case study and all of a sudden the fog lifted for me because I found that I was able to think okay yeah I can see that and the other amazing thing I thought that came out of it, which again, you can explain a bit more about, was that I've, we've, we said there's probably more than one book in there. Yes, yeah. Because that happens quite often. Um, there was a book I worked on, which was all about franchising. And I remember the first meeting with Len, um, and I've actually got it here, actually, Len's book. And, oh, um, franchising, yes. Yes, it was all about franchising. But within the first meeting, we realised, well, actually, there's two books in it because there's one for people who want to buy a franchise yeah. and there's one for people who want to franchise their business. They're two completely different audiences. And, you know, you don't want to overwhelm people with trying to tackle too much in one book. No. You're better off putting it simply and um, completely for that audience and then thinking there's another book in it and so with you it was very much about who your audience mm. is for which part of what you do wasn't mm. it because yeah. I think you, can, you said as well you helped me to see clearly that actually I mean I knew it already but there are different clients and you're always having to it's like when you are coaching you're always like you're there to help and serve the person that you're working with in your solving their problems and helping them with their problems and challenges. And so it's not about what you know, it's what is it relevant to them? And you you help me to see, well, okay, this is relevant to this market. It could be parents. Another book could be for young people. Yes. Another book could be for professionals. And all of a sudden they started saying, oh, not having to include it all because sometimes too, less is more, isn't it? It is, and it's thinking about the language you use because for the audience that might be different, especially when you're talking about an age group, you know, and that that's so important to think about. And one of my top tips, actually, in terms of writing is if you are starting to write, is to think of the reader, almost mm -hmm. take your own ego out of it. And you're thinking about your reader and what is it they need to hear. And that also, in a way, helps you write because your because your ego has been put to one side, um, and you know you are helping someone through what you're doing. It gets rid of those negative voices on your shoulder, saying, "What do you know in your daily life? How much you help people?" Mm -hmm. Putting it down on paper. Mm. It's just another way of helping people, and mm. that helps you get rid of that negative voice as well. Mm. And I think some people may I mention the phrase imposter syndrome. Some people do get that massive imposter syndrome, do don't they, in their life, in a lot of things they do. Yeah. And I think that just getting it down makes you realise I do have something to offer. Exactly. I have a lot to offer here. Mm. I am good enough, and you get rid of all that negativity and all that that inner chatter that that you know. I, we both talk about, you know, you know, in terms of, you know, I'm going to be having a health chapter a bit on mindset and positivity and, and negativity and in a chatter. And it made me realise it's it's also applicable to me. Yes. Yes. And, and that's lovely, isn't it? When you get these little light bulb moments and, yeah. and you, well, yeah, there is something out there. People do want to hear about this and want to see how you can help. And it is about because something that's come up recently as well is I've had a couple of people come to me and say, oh, what I'd be writing about, people have written about before. Why should I write a book? And I'm saying, but no one who has exactly your experience, exactly your knowledge, exactly your style 
mm-hmm. has helped, has written a book. Mm-hmm. So what you bring to the table matters and the way you say it matters. And so it's thinking about that and thinking about what you do and how you help people. Mm-hmm. The way you do it, it's the you you bring into the book. Yeah. That and I think that's bringing out the authenticity, isn't it? We all mm-hmm. need to be authentic and real and, and, and it comes from inside, which is why I said I reflected on your passion. And when we get talking, it is lovely. It's just like, you know, it's and I have noticed already just in a few conversations, we had a little bit of a break because of things going on with me and then the coronavirus. But now uh, we're getting back on track, aren't we? And that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. By the way, I love, we've got some comments coming in. Kat, Kat Massey, uh, looking mighty fine ladies. Emma <laughs> <Kat>. <laughs> Um, Emma's this is Emma's comment. My map sessions make you see the book visually. Mm. I'm a very visual person, so actually, mm. it totally connected with me. Yeah, because I could see it visually. I'm very visual because of my my background. Yeah. Um, and then, like Kat has said that um, Ma- Maggie, this is Maggie's comment. Love mind mapping with my creating mentoring clients, um, but it also clears. It does clear headspace, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, you're very good at it. And you are very good at it, Sean. You are absolutely very good. I think it's interesting what Emma's saying about the mind map um, making the um, makes you see it visually. With Emma and with yourself, you've already got a process with Emma. It's a protocol, yeah. you know, and that's already in place. So that is almost like a visual thing anyway. But yeah. just putting it on a mind map yeah. makes you realise how that can become a book. Mm-hmm. Your process or your protocol and it that it does help do that so once we've gone to the mind map then what's the next stage then in the, the next process? stage is actually sitting down and writing and um, <laughs> what we do is um break it up so again another tip is you don't have to start at the beginning don't make life hard for you and sometimes say if it's the introduction sometimes that's best left till the last because you know what you've put in the rest of the book Um, so start where it's easiest so that you can find it easy to write or easier to write and just get down and do it and that's the other thing is just start writing. The thing is, nobody needs to see what you're writing. The whole thing is about getting into the flow of it, getting into the rhythm of it. Um, you may be someone who likes to set aside 20 minutes a day, half an hour a day. You may be someone who wants to give a whole afternoon to it. I always feel that giving a little bit of time every day helps with keeping that rhythm going. It's like when you start to exercise, you get into the habit, you start mm-hmm almost feeling that you have to do it and I'd never say give yourself a word limit I'd say give yourself a time limit Mm -hmm. um, and just say 20 minutes and just tell yourself it doesn't matter how much I write you know even if it's a sentence it's something I've moved on in the book and um, quite often or more often than not If you sit down and say, I'm going to write a sentence, that turns into a paragraph and it may turn into a few pages because Mm -hmm. once you get down and do it, you you don't put too much pressure on yourself, then it starts to flow. So it's all about writing. And then so they set aside um, time to write and then we have monthly mentoring meetings and those are usually done uh remotely like this anyway and what we do is um they'll have sent it to me what they've written that month uh in the week before our mentoring session i'll have gone through it and made some comments and we have an hour-long session where we go through what those comments are any ideas i've got of things that i think should be added and it's amazing how many things i've become a short-term expert in, not necessarily an expert, but I've got to learn an awful lot about a lot of stuff. And so I can be that critical friend that finds out, don't you think your readers would want to hear about this? As well as your style of writing, do you think a table would go well here? Do you think that would be better in a diagram? How Mm -hmm. do you think would be best to say this? Mm -hmm. Things like that. 
and then in the next month they can be getting on with changing that and also writing the next chapter and so slowly but surely you get through writing the book and at the end of it you have a manuscript to work on what we also work on with um both non-fiction and fiction is building up your readership before your book is published so wow. with people who, who are writing a business book as part of their business it's having that close link and understanding how you writing the book and setting yourself up as an expert in your field mm -hmm. helps in promoting your business and you as a speaker and all these things and so it's important to get people on the journey with you of you writing the book of putting extracts from your book of making people understand the life of an author as well so mm -hmm. that by the time your book is published there's people out there dying to read what you've written because mm -hmm. you spent that time building up that uh readership mm -hmm. in that process as well and that's so what's great is that you don't just take people through the, the plan but you actually do it with them and then you also help them to actually get into the marketing of the book afterwards yeah. don't you? and, and that's well, during as well all the way during because um i'm quite often known to be sending little messages saying oh um, you, you know have you thought about you know this has come up in the news today have you thought about maybe you could do a post on that link to your book yeah. You know, I, I am a bit of a nag like that. <laughs> well, I don't think you're a nag. I think what's wonderful is that you actually really care. And that comes yeah. across really. No, it generally does. And also what's left helped me is that is that I think that um, I've been starting to build up this little toolkit of all my, um, I, it's, not this te it's not testimonials about me, no. but it's testimonials. It's, it's case studies of how people have been transformed or, or changed or helped yeah. by looking and implementing the techniques. And yeah. that's nice, isn't it? And I wouldn't have, and I think it's lovely that you've made suggestions for me about dotting it around the book. And I mean, that's all personal stuff to our journey, but yeah. I think it's, you, it, you do give a lot more than people sort of like realize with mentoring. It's it's a lot more to it. And yeah. one, even though you're meeting only once a month, you are involved all the way through the process, yeah. aren't you? And like I say, it's like, a, it's a friendship, you know, yeah. so you, you can't just distance yourself to once a month, you know, you are involved. And because people are going through high highs and lows you know in writing a book you're there and mm -hmm. so you go through it with them and uh, so you can't help but getting emotionally involved in what they're doing as well and there's a couple of questions I'll, and Sue's got a lovely question which I will tackle in a moment but can I just just whilst we're on the topic of, of highs and lows so sometimes you might um, you've obviously covered the knowing what to write because you've obviously done the mind map so hopefully you know what it is you're going to tackle what happens if you you've mentioned about also setting yourself targets of like say 20 minutes obviously if you go over that it won't matter but what about it is it best is there a best time of day or is it better to get into a regular pattern of the same time or the where i mean we yeah. talked about the fact that jk rowling because she was so when she first started she was uh, she used to write in a cafe <laughs> yeah and, uh, she had nowhere else to do it is yeah. there a best place or time do you think i'd say play around with it everybody is different as Kat says I notice in her comment that everyone's unique and so the way they write is also unique you may find that you're better off writing in the morning you may be better off in the afternoon you may be better off doing it in different times of the day you may find it easier to get up half an hour early and do it then play around with when's good for you another thing I'd say is if you're really struggling in writing and you're used to always writing by typing on the computer but mm. you're not getting anywhere get a pen and paper and go somewhere else and write mm -hmm. in you know longhand write uh, notes and vice versa or start recording your voice and what you're saying play around with different things and see what works for you and it might be a different thing on a different way on a different day it might be a different technique you use just to unblock that blockage mm. and move on 
you know so um, it's such a good tip because sometimes i find that i'm not a very good typist so i can't type quite quickly so actually i can't get my ideas out quick enough so actually i find scribbling my writing is awful so i do sometimes just uh, because my computer allows me to press dictate i just talk into the computer yeah. so in a sense that's a little bit like dictating and i was listening to one of cat's um uh, lives and she was saying um hi cat uh, and she was also saying how when she was she wrote her first uh, book she was actually out on walks and she was just sort of talking into you know and she was just writing down and then going home and blogging so I think it's whatever you find, it's really good that you've said that you don't have to be rigid with it. Yeah. Flexibility yeah. is key, isn't it? I, I think the whole thing is about don't make things difficult for yourself. Yeah. You know, anything you can do to not make things difficult for yourself, then you, it's, it's difficult enough as it is writing a book mm -hmm. or getting into it, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, don't make things even harder. Mm -hmm. um, so go with your own waves of what works for you but just try different things i'd say and can you just, i'm just going to share sue's um lovely comment and in fact this might you might be able to answer this because um it's the one about um she will maybe write a book trouble is who how do you put the best bits and this is where your probably your editing skills comes into it do you help with that helping to choose the best bits Yes, it is. It's, it's about, so it's again thinking about the reader and thinking what does the reader want to hear. And if you've made your reader real in your mind, you've actually got a real person mm. there in your mind. So it could be uh, Sheila, who's 53, who lives in Macclesfield, um, you know, and she stays awake at night because, and if, you know, if you've got that person, then you can start thinking, if I was sitting down with her for an hour, what would I want to tell her about? Yeah. The problem is Sue has got too many stories, so we would have to narrow it down <laughs> somewhat. And I'm a bit worried about her comments about I, we'd all be in it. So now I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you just start narrowing it down. Um, but, you know, with something like Sue's, which would it sounds like it'd be a compilation then we jot them all down and then start thinking which are the ones that are best and which ones link to each other or tell a different story so you wouldn't want too many of the same mm. so you know you just play around with it i think with something like that post-its would be sue's friend so you'd yeah. write down on separate post-its that you can then move around on a big sheet of paper and think what groupings start to form that mm. she can then start to put them into chapters. So I think she I might need a wall. I think she might need a wall of post-its. <laughs> 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 I will not veto on any stories about me, Sue. So. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> a bit worried. So, in terms of helping people then, so we've we've talked about the why, which is why do you want to write your book and who is like, who are you writing it for? That's your ideal client or your ideal audience. Who is it you're actually aiming it at? Um, we've talked about the where, which it can be anywhere you wish it to be, whatever suits you. And really it's finding um, a method or a time that works as well. That's the when. Um, in terms of when, could we just also cover one other thing, which is that is there an ideal time to, I think what you said to me when we first started, it's to make sure it's not too lengthy a process uh, so that there's like an end goal in mind. Um, yeah, it's always handy to have an end goal, um, but I wouldn't be rigid about it. I also wouldn't be rigid about, oh, how long does this book need to be? I've heard it's 60,000 words. Mm -hmm. I get that as long as you get your message across that's the important thing I would say in terms of starting start before you think you're ready yeah Otherwise, you know we're back to that imposter syndrome and you may never think you're ready mm. just start you know so the, the when in terms of that I'd say is just get going on it and you'd be amazed what you know what you can get across but um 
yeah what was the question again i can't remember what you were saying i was about basically sort of saying in is there an ideal sort of like you sort of said try to make sure you're sticking to a little even though it's not rigid is mm -hmm. trying to make sure you're covering a certain amount each month so that there's the flow and it doesn't sort of lose momentum i think yes. is what we were saying and it may, it, everyone again varies so it may take a few months for someone to find their true voice in what they're wanting to get across. So they may want to re revise what they've already written because they've found their writing voice. It, I'm sure it's the same with you with um, with the drama and stuff, you know, in terms of people acting or presenting, they need to be comfortable in the voice that they're putting across, be it, you know, vocal or of the written word. And yeah. so, just ease yourself into it um it, it does help to have some sort of deadline but don't beat yourself up mm. and talking about that voice what i actually was um i'm really pleased you said that because like as you sort of said you've 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 honed into the fact that yeah i work with people and try, trying to help them find their inner voice to actually express out and 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 say what's what they want to say and be able to express themselves effectively and it is about sometimes you can try something and it and sometimes it's your gut tells you it doesn't feel right that's it yes and it's about connecting with your inner self and your inner voice and your inner person isn't it so there is a there is quite a journey you go through actually doing it and i'm sure the people who've actually worked with you can probably um empathize with this and that's why i think i've felt i've connected with you because you actually understand that about me yeah. and I think that's yeah. part of it and I think whoever you get to work with when you're doing this it's about it's like it's like when you're choosing your coach or choosing your person to do something with you want to find something that you actually connect with yeah and on yeah. a deep level who gets you yes and I've never felt under any pressure or judgment which is again is is we should never judge each other but yeah. it, it's about being um you're feeling in a safe space and that's what's lovely, isn't it? It's feeling in a safe space and creating that safe space to actually feel that you can actually express. And and I've said to you at times, I, I came out recently, if I could just, I don't mind sharing it. I won't say the content, but I actually shared with you my background and my history and my past, which was quite traumatic. People don't know about. And that was all about me. And, and I've had some severe cases and things going on with me. But I didn't want to, um, uh, you know, I've never talked about it. And all of a sudden I realized it's important mm. because it's what got me to hear. And I was happy to share it with you. And now we've said we're going to park that and see whether we put it in the intro. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. That's my why and my reason. Maybe a long intro, that's the only problem. <laughs> we'll have to abbreviate it, we'll see if it's relevant. I'm just going to cover a couple more comments. Yeah. I'm actually going to need to just, my, my laptop is about to die and this is where maybe you can cover the next point. Yeah. Maggie, we've had lovely comments. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, Sue, about picking the best bits. Um, uh, Sean Ellen will obviously help with that. Um, Amanda is saying that she's finding it hard to start. Have you any tips with that? Yeah, um, I think with Amanda, um, maybe it's really thinking about what is your why, why do you want to write a book and actually expressing it on a piece of paper putting down why i want to write a book and that will help the motivation of getting started as well i'd say it's about being clear about who the reader is she's got such a wealth of experience and knowledge from her life is, has been extremely interesting in terms of what she's been doing um, throughout her life as well. And I think it's about what she wants to get across to who and just mapping that out. She's an artistic person anyway, putting it down on a piece of paper and then just starting, not feeling that there's any criticism at all. It really doesn't matter what rubbish is down on a page to begin with. No one has to see it. Mm. So, you know, you can spend a few days just just almost like a stream of consciousness. It's getting into the habit. It's, it's like your couch to 5K. You yeah. know, you're not going to suddenly go on a 5K. You may just go to the end of the road and back. So just writing something and getting that writing muscle active to begin mm. with is... Yeah 
the way to start. So I'd say just start, just write something and mm. see how it goes. And, you know, Amanda, you can always give me a ring um, and we can talk through it and just, you know, get going, I'd say. Just and I also think that that thing about writer's muscle, it's like you, like singers have a singer's muscle. You you, you sort of, you, um, you you start to learn the shape of the sounds and so on. And, and we are working on our muscle. But I do think there is this thing about writer's muscle because um, mm. I write for lo regular, three and a half years now for Local People magazine and um, every month, uh, you know, every other month for Heather Tebay. And it's been amazing. The more I've done, it just flows. It's easy. And also, once you've got some in the bank, um, it's like you said, sometimes it's a start in where to start. Some Once you've got some there, you can then go on to another topic and think, ah, that bit goes better with that chapter or that topic. So I might put a bit of resilience in with confidence and link the two together. And that's what I've been realizing recently with my boot camp. People need to have confidence but confidence in what and it's the same thing it's confidence about a particular topic you all of a sudden think oh i'll limp those two together yeah and it's an example so i just do think that your you know your suggestions have been brilliant so we've covered the why the what how we do it we've um and you've obviously explained the process um when it's whenever it suits you and obviously just get started so the when is also about maybe doing it right now not waiting and procrastinating and sort of waiting to be perfect some sometimes that is a, a challenge for people but, but it, I, I would switch off your internal editor as well because we've all got them and many of us haven't written since school days and so we always were writing knowing it was going to be judged and we were going to be marked on it. So it's shutting off that internal editor. And like you say, getting rid of that perfectionism and just getting started. Mm. And then your muscle starts to be exercised. Yeah. I love that. Um, I, I, I love that phrase, the internal editor. Yeah. That's really nice. We've all got that. We have, haven't we? Yeah. And um, yeah, and it's about, and also I think, oh, it does a challenge you, Kalini, my dear, deadline. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll get it out to him. Occasionally, I am a little bit uh, sort of at the last minute. <laughs> but we do get there, don't we? In fact, we've got this month my article just published. Look, and that's the magazine I'm talking about, guys. And there's an article I've done this year, this month, which is all about, um, which actually I might just share it on Facebook because it's uh, awesome. And Heather sometimes gets it print published in a way that everybody can just read it online. And it's talking about my wheel of well-being and all of the aspects that need to go together to actually in, in sort of contribute to well-being. Do you know, it's been absolutely lovely talking to you, Sean. Uh, can I just actually ask you as well um, to say to maybe we can just talk about the benefits of writing a book? Because I think people think it's it's not to nest. I am never motivated by doing anything. My, money is not my motivator. Yeah. It's not to make money, is it? To me, it's about getting my knowledge out. Child. Yeah. <laughs> Not unless you're Lee Child or J.K. <laughs> Rowling or something. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think there are lots of benefits. You've obviously said it's about sharing your knowledge and helping other people. That, for me, is my biggest passion or, or wish to do it. But I think it also helps you to become an expert in your field. Can you ex talk a bit more about that? Yeah, it's it, it's um, quite often when I do a talk and I ask everybody to stand up and I ask them to remain standing if they've ever thought about writing a book. So some people sit down, but the majority stay standing. How many have actually started and a few more sit down? Um, how many have finished writing a book and they have it already? A few more sit down. <laughs> and then going to how many have published? And there's very few from a, a room of, say, 60, 70 people. One or two may remain standing, mm -hmm. um, unless you're at what, Sue's literary lunches when, you know, you get most of the room is still standing because uh, a lot of them are writers. Um, but um, it's going through that process to then be seen as an expert in your field compared to your competitors people get a feel for what you are about, your style and your wisdom and your experience 
and how you put things across, they then can decide from a relatively small investment of buying a book whether or not they want to work with you, whether or not they want to follow your online course, mm -hmm. or whether or not they want to um, work with you one-to-one -one even. So it's, it's a shortcut to getting to know you in a way. Also, as soon as you can say I'm an author, you do get invited to speak more at events and things like that. Mm. Um, in terms of fiction books, it could be that it's your passion. You've always wanted to write a book. You may want it as a legacy for your children. There's all sorts of reasons. It's just understanding from within yourself what is your why. But in a business sense, it is something that makes you stand apart from your competitors mm -hmm. it allows people to understand what you're about and it places you as an expert in your field um and even if others have already written about similar subjects no one's done it in the way you would do it mm -hmm. and that's important that's an amazingly comprehensive explanation thank you because i think um people some people sort of think book writing, there's a big push at the moment, isn't there, to write a chapter in a book or to yeah. do this, to do that, isn't there, to become a best-selling author. Um, can you explain this best-selling author phrase? What does it actually mean? <laughs> Sometimes on Amazon it could be just best-selling because you're in a particular category. What, what does it actually mean? It, it does mean, basically, that you are... Um, with Amazon, you could be considered best-selling if you're in the top 100 in a category of your field um, for a, a, length, a certain length of time. Um, you can get a, an orange uh, sticker on the top if you've been number one for a couple of days and it says number one best-selling author. So it is about how, on Amazon, it's how many books you sold, but also how many reviews. Please, everyone, if you've read a book and you like it, or even, you know, if, if you just want to write an honest review, but be kind, um, then please do so, because it really helps with, especially self-published authors, getting them noticed mm -hmm. um, when people write the reviews and put them on Amazon. So it matters in terms of the number of reviews um, and how many books are sold. Um, and obviously, you've got things like the Times bestseller list as well, which is in terms of how many books have been sold as well. But they're all very cagey in terms of exactly how, especially Amazon, the algorithms are worked out, you know, obviously, because otherwise people would try and beat the system. Uh, my point is, if you've written a, a book which is helping people either through entertaining them or giving them information and knowledge you are proud of it and um people have got value from your book then that's that's the best thing you know you shouldn't worry too much about being a best-selling author the issue is is that you want to be proud of your book and know that it does what you want it to do mm -hmm. That's awesome. And so I think in some respects, it's finding out, it's, it's linking back to the original thing of we all why, isn't it? Yeah. Why are you doing it? And, um, you know, it, it, and everybody is going to be different, isn't it? And it yeah. doesn't mean that one person's right or one person's wrong. It's just yeah. basically finding out and following through. Um, I'd love to quote um, Stephen Covey here, who he has this lovely phrase, second um um, habit of highly effective people which is begin with the end in mind so you know why you're doing it and where you're going and that's your destination and therefore it's a bit like life really isn't it anything we do in life we need to know where we're heading hopefully um, and then we can actually get there it's like setting and how you get there you learn as you go along it, it doesn't have to be a sat nav path you know yeah. Things will happen. There'll be diversions, you know, there'll be like we get here, sheep in the middle of the road, and you just follow a different path. You will get there. Yeah. And I think to this, we've got a massive diversion for most people at the moment with COVID, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, a massive diversion, which has changed people. I don't know if you found that people are finding this is an ideal time to write because they've got the space and time, maybe. 
<laughs> considering their why as well you yeah. know what do they want to achieve what do they want as their legacy and how do they want to make their business stand out and that in itself makes people want to write but so I've just noticed that Irene has said it's uh, she likens writing to a counselling session <laughs> the cost um, and it, you know a lot of people are finding writing cathartic it doesn't yeah. need to be for an end in mind as such necessarily it could just be pouring out you know in terms of journaling and things like that in, in terms of just getting because a lot of people are struggling with sleep as well at the moment because all these thoughts and the pressures of what we're living through are in their minds and um it, it's just you know it, it's a way of getting it out of your mind and onto paper mm -hmm can find it cathartic i was going to say to you actually i was i'm glad you mentioned i was going to say to you about journaling because journaling is a very powerful tool isn't it for people yeah. it's like almost like self-counseling in the sense that you're just getting the thoughts out of your head uh, and onto paper and sort of sometimes it's a brain dump isn't it um of, of the things that have gone on and so you can actually have a good night's sleep yeah. so you're not dreaming about it all the time and it's not going yeah you were saying about your writing earlier my writing is atrocious it's, it's not worth, i should have been a gp um it's absolutely atrocious it's got worse and worse and worse my mother had the most beautiful writing and mine is just awful um and uh, so if i journaled which i don't but if i did there'd be no problems with confidentiality because no one else would be able to read what I've written. <laughs> Same here. And I'll just show a couple more comments, which have been lovely. That's a great tip. I think Val was responding to um, the internal editor yeah. comment about how oh, the fact is yeah. it's great yeah. um, always been marked or judged. Perfect. That's wonderful. And then Emma has said that she's found it very cathartic. It's helping her, which is lovely, really, really lovely. Um, and yeah, so I think we've covered most of the comments. If anybody's got any more questions, please do, or anything you'd like to add. Well, please. I wanted to say recently, Sue did a short story competition, Sue France, oh. and it was for anybody. Um, so there were people who'd written lots in the past, people who hadn't written before, who were very brave and put, pen to paper um and it was amazing honestly the standard was mm. exceptional people who hadn't written before as well and everybody can do it it's just the case of putting those big girl pants on and you know or big boy pants on and just getting down and doing it but it's setting a goal like that where people thought actually i will give it a try you know, it, it's just getting over yourself and just sitting down and writing. Um, just give it a go. Well, Sean, Sean, I think maybe we need to set a challenge. <laughs> See if there's uh, going to be a few people after this who come forward and actually say they can actually sort of say, right, OK, I'm going to have a go. You know, wouldn't it be great even if five more people or 10 yeah. people just sort of say, I'm going to have a go. And as you said, it doesn't need to be long. Yeah. It doesn't need to be 60,000 words. I mean, I have no idea what that is in length. Um, but as you've said to me, having a few books is probably better than having one massive tome, which yeah. people will just buy and then think, oh, where do I start? Just me. Yeah. Um, I think that's a really good plan. Um, I was just going to finish. We, we, we talked a little bit about you bringing on a few things just to tell us about some facts about yourself that people don't know. <laughs> For example, you are a harp player, aren't you? Well, I, yeah, I was. I have actually got a harp in the room there, but um, I haven't. My my husband bought it for me for my birthday um, a few years ago, but I haven't played properly since I was about eighteen. But I did used to play a concert wow. harp a big concert harp and you know, when you've asked me the question of what do people not know about me that was so difficult for me because I am an open book and I just tend to let everybody know everything so they know I love my guinea pigs I've got four guinea pigs you know that I'm well you can sort of get that from me but I'm bilingual you know that I play the harp so it is difficult to come up with something that not everybody knows but yeah yeah I did um I, I did love playing the harp and my harp teacher actually played at our wedding as well which is lovely uh, <laughs> yeah so have you got a favorite uh book at all or is that a difficult question for you I'm, 
when anyone ever asks me about favorites it's it, it always I always find that difficult because I have a basket of favourites for everything, mm -hmm. a basket of favourite songs, you know, a basket of favourite books. Mm -hmm. I loved since school days To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, yes. I loved that book. I mm -hmm. adored it, you know. Um, but my, I, I love reading, every, and I'm one of these ones. Once I start reading a book, I have to finish it. Quite often, I'm the only one in my book group that does because <laughs> everyone else kills <laughs> Because I do have eclectic tastes and I will read anything, which is a good job given my what I do now. But um, yeah, it, it, I've got so many. I, I, I will read anything and I just see value in so many books that it's difficult mm. for me to choose. Mm. And in fact, even just with my children, they are avid readers. They have been all the way through their life. And I think that it does actually, the more you read, it does actually help you, doesn't it? With your writing, with your um, with your thought processes. You just you can always learn something from somebody. Um, the, best, the best way to become a better writer is to read more. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I you said that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Val's put, yay. I'm not sure what she's saying yay <laughs> to. <laughs> Is she opening a bottle of Prosecco or something? <laughs> we were there and we could have a glass each. We ought to celebrate. Charlotte, Charlotte, it's been absolutely fab talking to you. Have you enjoyed it? I have. Thank you, Kalina. It's been lovely. And uh, I hope every, it's given everybody a bit of insight into the process and, uh, you know, and, and the benefits, and but just also the enjoyment, I think, that can be had from um you know from doing it actually and have a go it certainly inspired me and it's got me i was so motivated when i, I did my my uh, mind map with you absolutely yeah. amazing um and just to mention and put it out there that i'm actually we we said that we would do this because it's not i wanted it every conversation i'm having i'm doing this as a series if anybody wants to come on they are very welcome to be a guest, just like you have been, because what I'm doing is I'm trying to find inspirational people, inspirational stories that people can learn from and take away, because I think it's quite important just to liven up and forgive variety at the moment with uh, what's uh, going on with COVID. And so is anybody, oh, Tony lost us for the second time. Oh, no. <laughs> she she keeps it from it's going to be saved and it will be. Um, oh, Amanda, yes, please do. So if anybody, I've already invited Heather T. Bay. She said she's hesitating. I think she was listening today to see whether or not she would. It'd be lovely if, uh, if Sue wants to come on or um, uh, anybody, really. Val, whoever wants to come on. And Val and the cushions, yes. And Emma, if you want to come on and talk about your yeah. new venture, which would be exciting. Um, so, yeah, guys, it's been lovely. Thank you so much. We said we were going to stick to 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> half of the course isn't it <laughs> when you said to me 30 35 i said it might, it might be a bit longer than that i knew what was going to happen but i think it's been valuable because i think there's no point just doing it by halves we might as well do a thorough i think everybody's got the the intention today was to tell about the why what how when where who etc and i think we've got that we've got a lot more as well it's been lovely to get to know you a bit better as well i'm sure that's been lovely thank you, thank you very much everybody Everybody. I'm going to say goodbye now and we're both going to say goodbye and catch you and please as I said do share this anybody wants to um, add any comments afterwards please feel that uh, by the way I just will say that Val Pal her yay was to to kill a mockingbird yes. <laughs> yeah, <good. laughs> and Heather T. Bay said it's been it's gin Friday definitely Heather said inspiring thank you lots and lots of thank yous and absolutely love the fact that we've had this chat thank you I'm, as you can see i get quite excited by it i love it <laughs> take care everybody have a lovely day okay bye bye, bye.